I've got the case of Daniel Schimmel to reverse, and um, I'm pardon me, Nathaniel Schimmel. Nathaniel Schimmel was a young man with Asperger's living with his mother. Um, his mother thought that he was playing too many computer games and on his computer in general uh, too much and not looking for a job. And um, yeah, Nathaniel had very poor communication skills. I think an argument escalated in their kitchen and um, Nathaniel Schimmel just flipped his you-know-what and stabbed her, unfortunately. So here's the first reversal I've got from that. And, and did, you, I mean, did you do something to make it worse? I mean, what, what happened? I was just really big cheek grabbed me and I just, like, I think... Did she grab you? I mean, did she grab you? She just grabbed my arm, like, just out of, like... Okay, now this is Nathaniel Schimmel breaking down in the end and admitting essentially to what he'd done. And what I hear backwards is guilt for us. Guilt for us. But before he admitted his guilt, um, here are some things that he said while trying to deny it. And this is what it sounds like in reverse when people are wondering whether or not someone knows what they say they think they know as they're wondering whether or not they got caught. Um, here we go. Okay, and um, backwards, I think um, what I hear is you're shilling it, gotta stop. You're shilling it, I've got to stop. You're shilling it, I've got to stop. Once again, shilling with an apostrophe instead of a G. Uh, here we go, slowest. Okay, um, so he could be thinking uh, this cop might not know <clears throat> what he's implying that he knows, and he's worried that he's been given enough rope to hang himself. Um, either that or he's talking to himself with the word you're, as in you're spinning too many tall tales and you're going to trip yourself up. The clip of the detective pointing out what the murder weapon was to Nathaniel to see how he reacts. Okay, he says, yeah, we got a kitchen knife thing. And um, what does he say backwards again? I forget. Yeah, oh, yeah the sham will shake. Um, and I'm not sure if the word will is properly formed or not. Maybe it's just the sham gibberish shake. <laughs> uh, you, you make up your own mind. I'll play it a little bit slower. The one thing I know I hear for sure is the sham and shake. Here's some reversals from the cop who seems to think he knows who he's got and who's guilty. Here he is. A knife that came out of your house, right, that you walked through, that you walked past it. What I think I hear him saying backwards right there, the detective that is, is um, a sack over you? Is that what he said? It's, sack over you. it's either a sack or it's sack over you. Yeah, it's sack over you is what I hear. And I think he goes on to say something else backwards right after that. What was that again? Yeah, we follow you. Here's the interaction between Nathaniel and the detective um, after Nathaniel totally breaks down and admits what he's done and feels, um, you know, all of the shame and the uh, fear of what's to come. And what I think I hear the cop saying is uh, killer regret. Now, um, it's possible that the word I'm interpreting as regret is actually regret. Uh, you can rewind it and listen to it again. Um, and I, I can't really tell which it is, and I'm not really sure if it being regret would change it um, that much. I mean, if the cop is saying killer regret, that means that the cop really thinks that he's like a mentally disabled or emotionally disabled person that lost control that once. Um, if it's killer regret, um, maybe it's the cop um, saying, 
I've got to change the way I approach this killer because he's admitted it. I don't need to be so hardcore and um, mentally try to break him down now. What the cop says immediately after that in reverse order is, um, I help one a night or help one a night. Um, and I already played what he said forward, so I'll just jump to playing it backwards. Aha, uh -huh. so, um, I mean, not only does he think his job is to find who the killer is and nail a confession, but I think he genuinely thinks that people who admit to these things make things easier on themselves. And I think he, he actually thinks that he's helping um, this person who admitted to this crime by getting them to get it off their chest and make things easier on themselves emotionally in the long run. A reversal that seems to show that Nathan is still kind of regretting um, confessing. Um, here we go. Okay. Hang on. It just okay, and what I hear him saying backwards is dumb answered. I guess he thought at the beginning of the interview that if he just stuck to his guns, um, he wouldn't get caught. Here's another part of a Nathaniel Schimmel's confession. Okay, and backwards, I think I hear guilt for us. So if you're wondering whether he or not he was coerced into a um, false confession, I think not. The reversal I showed you earlier where he says, you're a shill, I've got to stop. There's something interesting that the cop says before that backwards, and it's almost like a backwards conversation they're having. I'll show it to you all again with the, what the cop said included. So I hear the cop saying backwards, sharp gallows. And then uh, Nathaniel Schimmel goes on right after that to say, um, you're a shill or something like that. I'll play it all backwards, full speed. You're shilling it, I've got to stop. So sharp gallows, then you're shilling it, I've got to stop. I think that was at the point in the interview where, like I said, he was wondering how much the cops really had and whether or not they were trying to fake him into thinking it was all over. The detective asks um, Nathaniel Schimmel before he's confessed, why were your fingerprints on the knife? And he says something like, oh, I don't know, I just touched it. Here he is. Why did you touch it? I don't know. I was scared. And uh, what I think I hear backwards is Urich sh Urich's shit. Urich's shit. And uh, that's kind of one of the weirder words that I hear from time to time in reverse speech. The reason that I looked up the word Urich and kind of consider it almost to be a legitimate reverse speech word at this point is because I've heard it slipped into full context sentences so many times that I think it's one of those Germanic slash almost English words that has been pulled into people's subconscious lexicons somehow. Uh, pardon me if I'm using the wrong word. I just mean a database of words. Um, and um, what I think Urich means to me in the context that I've heard it, in the context that I've looked it up on Google, is... Um, it means someone who thinks highly of themselves. It could be someone talking about someone of a high status, someone who's kind of bossy. Um, and it also seems to apply to people referring to themselves or other people as being a bit tyrannical. Um, so right there as he's trying to explain stuff away, it could be that he's looking at himself in a guilty way as being kind of 
entitled because, I mean, as he's thinking, oh my God, I've killed my mom, I could be in trouble, he knows deep down the reason he got himself in that trouble is because he was refusing to look for a job. 